Africa is, is ours. And I want us to guard it with all our life. Because whether we like it or not, we have rogue lions already in Africa. Rogue lions are people that come into the country, they see the continent, they see that there are 1.6 billion people on this continent and they will harvest us whether we like it or yes. Those particular people are the Asians, particularly the Chinese. Every single now and then they are doing things every single day to make money, leave this continent every single day. It is also said that in the next 30 years, the population of the world would have increased by 2.5 billion people and Africa will be responsible to 1.3 billion. Nigeria will increase to 350 million. Now that is money, that is data. If we don't get ourselves ready to actually control the resources that we have here, we will actually lose it to rogue lions. Now, why I'm saying rogue lions is that you need to understand what a pride is. A pride is made up of the alpha male, made up of the female lions and also the cubs. The responsibility of the male lions is to provide security, provide protection around the pride. And that is the responsibility of government. Then you now have um, the female lions. Their responsibility is to find food. The male lions don't find the food, it's the female lions. That is what we have as businessmen. Every single one of us here are them. Then you have the cubs, which are the small baby lions. Their responsibility is to learn from the fathers and the mothers so that they can become dominant in future. There are certain faces of these lions that people do not forget or allow to slip by. When a male lion, especially a cub, gets to three years old, he has to leave the house because his genitals is able to get the female lions pregnant, so the alpha male doesn't want him. The first thing that happens to that male um, cub is that he's sent out to become a scavenger. Now, he has to understudy what it means to scavenge. The problem we have in Africa today is free food. When you chase a man, when you give a man free food, you stop the man from thinking. Your responsibility as an adult that is making money is to push your junior one out to the field and let them go and learn to survive. Because if you don't teach them how to survive, they'll become the next lions that will attack you. They become rogue lions to you. If you want to change, if you put cement inside a pipe, as long as it is still wet, you can always adjust it. But if that cement gets dry, you have to break it to change it. A lot of young minds in Africa have turned to hard cement. If you go to different countries in Africa now, the Asians have taken over. And what do the Asians do? If you ever read this book, um, Africa, um, Asia's New Continent, called Africa, what they have done is that they go to countries that are downtrodden and then they fund that country. Yeah. Now, what do they do? They only build infrastructure. They don't invest in your education. They don't invest in it. They invest in your infrastructure. When they invest in your infrastructure, they tell you to pay in 20, 30 years. What they know is that they have calculated, they are very good at mathematics. They know that you cannot pay in 30 years. So what they do is that they take the infrastructure and then they put their policemen in that country. So the agreement you sign, when you sign the agreement to take money from China, is that you, you build a community for them and they now send you in. Now that contract that they signed, which government signed, especially most African government, there are three things in that contract. It says that it will be built by a Chinese company if you want their money. Number two, it will, all the materials will be brought from China. And number three, their personnel will build it. Any country or any assets that any Chinese company builds, watch it, it's all written in Chinese. What does that mean? The maintenance will be done by them. By the time the maintenance is done by them, they are eating your economy forever. You need to know this and know it now. Why am I saying this? I am 46 years old, I become 47 in the next few months. Anybody above 40 years old is out of this generation. So I tell myself I will never invest in anybody over 40 years old because 40 is the end of a generation. Because investing in somebody over 40 years old is an investment in the past. Every single one of you here, a lot of you are under 40 years old. I need to pour out my spirit because my bones are not as strong as yours. I cannot run as fast as yours, but they are lions coming behind. In this same lucky, there are Chinese people that have taken over buildings like this. They live in here, but inside that building you have 52 Chinese people living inside. The whole of the ground floor are industries. They come here. They know that your global competitive index report, you don't read it. And I challenge every single one of you to go and read that document, global competitive index report, 2018-2019. It will shock you 
about it because what they do is that they read that report and they know where your problems are. They fix it. They know that you don't have money to buy generator. They know that you don't have money for fuel. They know that you don't have a lot of money. So what do they do? You don't have light. They give you a rechargeable fan, rechargeable light. They give you all these things. They use your problem and they feed you. Not only are they dealing with Nigeria, they're dealing with every other continent in Africa. If Africa is ready to, 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 to win, it will take you to come back from being a scavenger and come and defend the pride today. If you don't defend the pride now, rogue lions will come back and turn our children to slaves and turn our wives, which are the female, which are the female lion, to work for them. When a rogue lion comes into a territory, the first thing he does is to kill the alpha lion. It kills the government. It takes over authority. Then if the, cho if the female have children, they kill all the children. They turn all the children to pay all the toll gates, build paid money for, for refurbishing airport. But the women, what do they do with them? They turn them to be their own wives and to reproduce after their kind. How come it is that we have in Nigeria here more Chinese people in different rural areas than we know? Go to Econo, go to different parts, the hinterland. They know where the gold is in Nigeria. The problem in Taraba is not because we don't know. It's because Chinese have found out that there's gold there. So, I mean, Zamfara, they have found out that there's gold there. So, they have gone there to harvest. Look at what happened in Ghana. They have broken the ground there. It has caused um, this uh, erosion because they have defaced the whole of Ghana. Go to Calabar. The, the sticks that you have there, the, the wood now, deforestation is going out of hand. That will tell the governor, better stop it or you will lose the whole of Cross River State. They will remove everything and send it back home. Right now, in the whole of Africa, there's, a, there's, there's something they call it. They go to different countries, specific, and then they get it. So everything they get, all the minerals, go back to China. It's called new colon, uh, colonialism. And it's happening. To, to add to what you're saying, yes. they supply the telecom AU yes, they, they built. No, see, if they on AU I, I, I actually did a presentation in AU. There is actually, it was built by a Chinese company, and there's a Chinese temple beside it. Mm. Now, 80% of all the towers in Addis Ababa were built by a Chinese company. Chinese towers, Chinese electric, Chinese every single thing. And it is a problem of their government. And listen to their document. Their report says that 80% of whatever is produced in China must leave the country. Whether it is first grade, second grade, fourth grade, 15th grade, it must leave the country. Chinese people do not even do the NSIS. They don't have time for that one. It is you that will deal with it. Whatever is produced in China, 80%. I will tell you a story in China as I want to end now. At a certain point in my time, I was doing telemetry systems to do remote monitoring. And this was done with GSM. So I didn't need to put up an antenna. I didn't want that. I wanted GSM-enabled equipment. Because at this point in, in this lucky phase one, I was in charge of alarm center. So I knew this area, all the arm robbers and co, how to deal with them. But we had a problem. We couldn't be hosting masks. So we needed telecoms. So I spoke with the lady in China. And um, we communicated on, on uh, Skype. And her name was um, Georgina or something like that. But when I, we, so she said that this equipment will cost $100 a sample. So we paid the $100. She sent the equipment. The equipment worked perfectly. And I said, okay, I wanted to order 300 pieces of this equipment. But I said, for me to order, I need to come and see your factory. She said, no problem. They arranged with a few people. They got me an approval to come to China. I flew to Shenzhen in China. I got to their office. When I got to their office, I was shocked. The whole of their office production plant is a three-bedroom flat. Wow. Three-bedroom flat. The parlor is the marketing office. Two rooms are production. Her bedroom is one. And she was doing international trade. She had staff that resume in the morning and close by 6 p.m. And also she has staff that increase, that come by 6 p.m. and close by 6 a.m. in the morning. Their marketing is 24 hours. Nigerians, why, why do we do business only in the day? We need to change the paradigm and start trading at night. Because once it is, day, once it is night there, they know that it is daytime here. Yeah. So they market you. They market other countries. I want to challenge Nigerian businessmen. Every single person that is here, better turn your own company into having a marketing unit that resumes at night, 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Whatever money you make in the daytime, you can make twice as much in the night. My name is Ubon King, and I'm just a troublemaker.